we have exclusively covered what are the preservation techniques that could be employed significantly to increase the shelf life of the food product. So in today's lecture, we will be concentrating effectively on what are the spoiler changes that are exclusively observed in case of dairy product and what kind of preservation technique could be employed to in turn extend the shelf life of the dairy product. So let us start our today's lecture by understanding what exactly the dairy product means. So whenever we are talking about dairy product, it is not merely the fluid milk. It is also the product which are actually derived out of the fluid milk, which exclusively includes the cream, butter, the frozen dairy products such as like the ice cream and also the fermented milk products such as like the he, lassi and also the condensed as well as dried milk products. So all of them together are regarded as dairy product. Okay. So as we are already aware, so the, the, the milk is exclusively regarded as a perishable food variety. So why exactly it is a perishable food variety? Because of the available moisture content. So as we are already aware, the available moisture content in case of milk is extremely high which can range anywhere between 85 to 89 percentage. So thereby the water activity of the milk will be extremely high which will in turn facilitate the microorganisms to proliferate and bring in a lot of chemical changes in turn rendering the food product to undergo spoilage. Okay. So let us have an understanding on what is the compositional variation that is existing in case of milk as far as the milk constituents are concerned. Okay. So the maximum the, the maximum content is shared by the water which range anywhere between 85.5 to 89.5 percentage followed by the fat content which ranges anywhere between 2.5 to 6 percentage and the protein content 2.9 to 5 percentage and the lactose content which is 3.6 to 5.5 and the mineral content which ranges anywhere between 0.6 to 0.9 percentage. So whenever we are talking about protein, so in case of milk, so the chief protein which is existing is casein plus whey protein. So casein contributes to anywhere about 80 percentage of the total protein concentrate while the whey protein constitutes only about 24 percent of the total protein content. So another important thing that has to be noted in here is lactose. So lactose is the chief carbohydrate, the chief carbohydrate which is exclusively to only milk. Okay. So that is the carbohydrate source that is existing in case of milk. So this is about the compositional difference or the composition of the milk constituents existing in case of milk. Okay. So coming to the important physicochemical characteristics, so we need to understand that the pH of milk ranges anywhere between 6.3 to 6.5. That means it is close to approximately 7 pH that is new, new, neutral pH. It means that it can always facilitate major growth and multiplication of neutrophiles. So neutrophiles might actually predominate in case of milk. Okay. So besides that it has higher moisture content which increases the available water activity thereby facilitating the growth of microorganism and also it is rich in nutrients such as like the lactose sugar which is the chief milk carbohydrate and also the butter fat and the citrate and non-nitrogenous milk compounds or non-nitrogenous compounds which are chiefly existing in case of milk. Okay, So these rich nutrients is not only imparting nutritional benefit to the consumer but it is also facilitating the microorganism growth. That means the microorganism can chiefly utilize either of these compounds or the nutritional compounds that is existing and in turn bring about the spoilage characteristic in case of milk as well as milk products. So this is about the in the, the physical chemical importance as far as milk is considered. So what kind of microorganism can actually exist? So whenever we are talking about the kind of microorganism it, it is existing in case of milk, so it can be classified into three or four distinct categories. So the first one is the mesophiles. So the mesophiles are the class of bacteria
which try to you know survive and grow at a room temperature so which is nothing but 30 to 37 degree centigrade so that is the ideal temperature which is required by most of the musophoi to bring in a lot of activity as far as spoilage characteristic is considered okay so here then i have given a table which gives you the type of micro flora and the example of individual microorganism okay so the first one is the cocci variety so in case of cocci variety we can always expect micro cocci streptococci as well as staphylococci so following which we also has a sporogenus so a sporogenus is nothing but which is devoid of spore that means it is not able to undergo sporulation process okay so a sporogenus gram positive routes includes mycobacterium corynebacterium as well as lactobacilli and we have another distinct category called as sporogenus it means that these are the category of bacteria which can form spore okay they include exclusively the bacillus so following which we have gram negative rods which predominates by pseudomonas alkali genes Escherichia coli and certain other variety and following which we have fungi so yeast and mold are together called as fungi okay so in case of yeast we have candida cleveromyces as well as saccharomyces while we are talking about molds so it is exclusively the aspergillus which might actually persist or exist in case of milk okay so this was about the mesophilic variety that might actually proliferate and predominate in case of milk so following which we have another distinct category that is the thermoduric microflora so the thermoduric microflora exclusively includes the mycobacterium bacillus clostridium micrococcus as well as alkali chains so how exactly we can actually define the thermoduric microflora so these are the microorganism which can resist the pasteurization temperature but they cannot multiply at this particular temperature so they are regarded as thermoduric microorganism and we have significantly studied about the examples in here so next then we have thermophilic microflora so thermophilic microflora are the category of microorganism which can resist pasteurization temperature and also can multiply at the same temperature okay so that is the thermophilic microflora to exam to give you an example we have bacillus circulans bacillus cherothermophilus and lactobacillus thermophilus so these are the distinct category or distinct variety which can actually exist in case of milk so besides that we also have cyclotropic microflora so cyclotropic microflora are the cold microflora which can be persisting at a refrigeration temperature so if we are storing milk or any other kind of milk product at a refrigeration temperature we can always expect the growth of cyclofloric microflora which includes exclusively the pseudomonas variety okay so the example for cyclotropes includes pseudomonas okay so besides that we also have coliforms so coliforms is the group of microorganism as we have already studied it is gram negative facultative anaerobe which includes e coli enterobacter and klebsiella as well as next then we have pathogens so whenever we are talking about pathogens it means that they are disease causing agents so which exclusively includes the brucella which causes brucellosis that means it renders miscarriage in case of an animal as well as human beings so next when we have mycobacterium which causes tuberculosis and also streptococcus listeria which causes listeriosis salmonella which might cause typhoid and shigella which causes shigellosis so and therefore these type of disease causing agents are regarded as pathogens so these are the different varieties of microflora that can be expected in case of milk okay so how exactly such kind of microorganism will seek an entrance into the food product especially in case of milk so what are the different sources of contamination which in turn rendering the entrance of this particular microflora into the 
food product. So the preliminary source of contamination can actually occur at the farm level. So where the animal is being reared or the animal is being milked. That is the milk barn or milk parlor. So that will be the preliminary source of contamination which is in turn rendering the entrance of such kind of pathogens that we have studied previously. So on the farm we always have a numerous source of contamination which is um, contributing to the microorganism existence in case of milk. Okay, So the milk contains relatively very very few bacteria whenever it leaves the udder. So as we have already studied whenever it leaves the udder of an animal it is regarded to be sterile. Okay, so that means like it is sterile and it is devoid of any other kind of microorganism. But the recent scientific studies have shown that the milk which is actually drawn from the udder of an animal actually contains couple of microorganisms. That means the scientists were able to isolate couple of microorganisms such as micrococi as well as streptococci. Okay, so those were the microorganisms. So during the normal milking operation, milk is subjected to contamination from the animal, especially the exterior of the udder and the adjacent area. So to explain you this particular top point, so I have established a picture in here. So here and you can clearly see the animal is lying on the dirty floor. That means that the udder of an animal is in direct contact with the floor which is extremely dirty. So so the floor which is having all the dirty particles is being attached to the udder. Okay, so the exterior of udder is being contaminated. Okay, so there will always be a transmission of the, uh, the, the microorganism which is existing on the floor on the surface of the udder. So that is the reason it is always advised to a milk handler or the milker to properly wash the udder of an animal and properly disinfect it and sanitize it prior to milking so that we can effectively remove any other kinds of exterior flora that must have been adhered on the surface of the udder. Okay, so that is of an important concept. Okay, so how exactly such kind of microflora can actually come? So there are different sources such as like the soil. Okay, so if we have dirty soil on the floor, it will result in the contamination of the soil microflora. Similarly, the water, the type of water that is being used, all of that will significantly contribute to the number of microorganisms existing on the surface and in turn, if it is not properly sanitized, will contribute to the significant number increase in case of milk. Okay, so besides that, we will also have to take into consideration the kind of vessels that are being used for storing of the milk at the farm level. So in most of the cases the farmers use either aluminium or the plastic vessels which is highly un undesirable that means like they are never insisted because it becomes very very difficult to clean them. Okay, So the type of utensils that is always advisable is the stainless steel containers because they are easy to clean and it do not harbor any other kinds of microorganism. Okay, so also if we are using any other kinds of iron or aluminium variety, if we have any kind of a dent in case of the storing vessels, it will always harbor microorganism because if we have a dent, what ideally happens is like it becomes difficult for cleaning. So if it is difficult for cleaning, it means that it is not properly being cleaned and it is significantly harboring a significant amount of microorganism. So it is always advisable to use stainless steel as a container for storing of milk in case of the farm level. Okay, So that is an important thing and also if the animal is subjected for machine milking where teat cups are actually used. So there proper cleaning of the teat cup is of important challenge. So the kind of water that is being used, if the water has been properly chlorinated, so that also actually matters. If the water is directly not chlorinated and it is being used, it means that it might have numerous variety of microorganism belonging to natural, uh, natural aquatic or soil dwelling or intestinal microflora. Okay, so they might actually contribute to the significant contamination and in turn contributing to the contamination of the milk as well. So it is always advisable that use of proper 
water for cleaning of the tea cups is important concern and also the sterilization and sanitization of the tea cups is must after every use okay so the next type of contamination that can be observed is while the milk is being transited that is while it is being transported from dairy to the processing unit and how exactly the milk is being converted to milk product and what are all the manufacturing at what manufacturing level the contamination can actually occur okay so the other source of contamination after the milk leaves the farm includes the tanker trucks because most of the times we will be using tanker trucks for the bulk transportation of milk so the cleaning of the tanker is also of significant importance if the tanker is not properly being cleaned it means that the next lot of milk the tanker is carrying it will be contaminated effectively so the cleaning of the tanker is of significant challenge to the dairy industry so besides that the kind of equipment that is being used for the processing of milk or milk products okay so here in i have established or given a picture of pasteurization unit so the pasteurization unit has to be significantly subjected for cip so cip stands for clean in place okay so where significantly after every operation or every um, operation of processing of milk they will be subjected for thorough cleaning by using alkali acid as well as sanitizers okay so if that is not properly done then it might actually gives a way to the microorganism to proliferate and multiply and bring in the chemical changes in case of your food product so besides that whatever the equipments that we are actually using for the sampling purpose so here then i have given you a picture of the plunger so this particular plunger in case of dairy industry is exclusively used for mixing purpose as far as can is concerned and also tanker is concerned okay so in the tanker we will be using plunger and also for the can for thorough mixing so we will be using plunger so if such kind of mixing equipment or sampling equipment what we actually call them as if it is not properly cleaned they will significantly gives rise to the increment in the microorganism number in case of your fluid milk so these are the important sources of contamination as far as milk is concerned so besides that the amount or level of contamination in case of each depends on the cleaning as well as sanitization method so the personal hygiene as well as the cleaning and sanitization technique if it is properly and effectively employed in case of a manufacturing industry at a manufacturing level then we can exclusively avoid a significant amount of contamination so the contamination as far as personal hygiene is concerned it might actually come from the hands of the milk handler if the hands are dirty that it means that it can always contribute to the microorganism so similarly the nails so nails of an individual who is in direct contact with the fluid milk or the milk product must be necessarily trimmed else the kind of contamination that the nails will actually has it will lead to the final product as well okay so similarly we also have another important source that is the open wound so open wound will necessarily gives a way to the microorganism to proliferate and seek an entrance inside the blood stream okay so to necessarily to prevent that what we have to do is like we will have, we will have to bandage them by using a bandage okay so similarly the personal hygiene as per as the appearance is concerned so the clean apron has to be on it must not be dirty so if it is dirty it means that the product will also be rendering for the kind of contamination so these are the necessary kinds of contamination of fluid milk okay so how exactly these kinds of contamination can be decreased that means we will have to employ a preservation technique so that we can necessarily combat effectively to avoid any kind of a contamination so the first type of preservation technique that could be employed to avoid necessary contamination is the asepsis okay so this particular asepsis what it means it is keeping away the microorganism so as you are previously studied asepsis is nothing but keeping away the microorganism
Okay, so how exactly it can be done? So the cleaning of dairy utensils, cow, milk contact surfaces such as like the pipelines, the vats, the tankers, the pumps, walls and what all equipments that are exclusively being used in case of a dairy industry or at a farm level. So considering even animal as an example. So the proper washing of an animal, proper grooming of an animal to necessarily remove any kind of a adhered exterior dust and dirt material should be properly cleaned. So that is nothing but asepsis. So if we are necessarily doing that, we are exclusively avoiding and keeping away the microorganism from the contamination to be happening. Okay. So since the number of bacteria in case of milk are indicative of the sanitary precautions and careful handling of the employee during the production. So if the product is significantly handled carefully and if the animals are properly cleaned and all the sanitation and necessary purposes are effectively in place, then the amount of microorganism that can be persisting in case of milk will be significantly decreased. Okay. So besides that, packaging is another technique which will prevent the entrance of any kind of a external microorganism. So that will act as a barrier in turn preventing the entrance of an external microorganism to be you uh, to be uh, significantly contaminating the food product okay so in case of uh, in case of here we are talking about exclusively the milk as well as milk product okay so the next important preservation technique that could be employed is pasteurization so pasteurization is a mild heat treatment that is given to the milk to kill most of the spoilage as well as pathogenic microorganisms. So how exactly one can actually define the term pasteurization of milk? So the term pasteurization of milk is nothing but heating of every particle of milk at least to a temperature of 72 degrees centigrade for a period of 15 seconds or 62 to 63 degrees centigrade for a period of 30 minutes. So what exactly is happening during this time? The spoilage causing microorganism as well as pathogenic microorganism are taken care. Okay. That means they are effectively destroyed. So we have an indicator microorganism which will establish the efficacy of pasteurization. That means we have a specific kind of microorganism called as Coxiella bonitae. is the indicator microorganism for milk pasteurization. So similarly, we also have an enzyme which is an which indicates the efficacy of pasteurization. So that is nothing but alkaline phosphatase. Okay, so alkaline phosphatase is an enzyme which will give us an indication about the efficacy of pasteurization. So how effectively the pasteurization has been performed for the milk. So if after pasteurization we predict that the alkaline phosphatase enzyme is present that means the milk has not significantly been pasteurized. Similarly if we find the presence of coxilla burnetai that means that it is not significantly taken care. That means that all the other pathogenic microflora are not exactly dead. That means that might be surviving. Okay, so that is an important thing to be noticed. So, as you have already studied, so there are two important objectives as far as pasteurization of milk is considered. So, first one is to kill the pathogens that might enter the milk and be transmitted to the people. Okay, so that is one of the important thing because as we already know, milk has certain important pathogens such as like um, coxiella. So what this coxiella does, it causes cow fever. Okay, so similarly we have tuberculosis. Okay, so tuberculosis is caused by mycobacterium tuberculosis. Okay, so these are the two important pathogens which might seek an entrance into the milk and thereby transmit it to the human being or the consumer and ultimately leads or causes cow fever as well as tuberculosis. Okay, so besides that the second important objective is to improve the keeping quality of 
milk. So how exactly one can actually improve the keeping quality by decreasing the number of microorganisms. So the microorganism load should be effectively decreased. So what we are doing for that? We are subjecting the milk for the mild heat treatment so that the amount of microorganism can be significantly reduced. Okay. So there are two different types of pasteurization technique that can be employed. So the first one is HTST. That does that means high temperature short time. So the operation involves the high temperature short time pasteurization where the milk is subjected for a heating of anywhere to 72 degrees centigrade for at least 15 seconds. So the milk has to be significantly held for 15 seconds at a desirable temperature of 72 degree centigrade. So whenever we, it is significantly happening it means that it is effectively taking care of all the pathogens including the Coxiella burnetii which is the most heat resistant microorganism which is also a pathogen. Okay, So this particular HTST pasteurization is significantly done by plate heat exchanger. Okay, so as you can clearly see in this particular picture. So one way we have the heating medium and the other way we have the fluid milk. So the exchange of heat happens and thereby the milk will increase in its temperature and thereby the milk will be held in a holding tubes. So which significantly, you know, decreases the amount of microorganism load existing in case of milk. Okay, so similarly we have another type that is low temperature long time. So the temperature here is 62.8 degree centigrade or it is 63 degree centigrade for a period of 30 minutes. That means the temperature here is low in comparison to HTST and that is the reason why it is regarded as low temperature and the longer time that is about 30 minutes while in case of HTST it is just merely 15 seconds. Okay. So here our main objective is to decrease the total number of existing microbial load and thereby to increase the shelf life of the fluid milk. Okay, so this is about the second important method of preservation that is duly employed to increase the shelf life of the milk as well as milk product. So next thing we have another important technique that is high temperature technique where the milk will be subjected for a higher temperature and that particular process is called as ultra high temperature. So what exactly ultra high temperature actually means? So as per the International Dairy Federation, so they have decided ultra high temperature as the process usually refers to the pasteurization technique where the temperature is at least 130 degree centigrade. So it should be at least 130 degree centigrade. In case of milk pasteurization we have seen it can be either 63 or 72. So 63 is LTLT while 72 is HTST that is high temperature short time. So similarly in case of ultra high temperature or it is also called as UHT the temperature should be at least 130 degree centigrade and it has to be heated for at least a period of 2 seconds. Okay, So that is the standard definition that is given by International Dairy Federation for UHT. So it says that the milk has to be significantly held at least at a temperature of 130 degree centigrade at least or approximately for a period of 2 seconds. So which will practically render the milk free from any kind of a microorganism. Okay. So the most popular type of UHT system that is existing currently is the indirect type of heating methods. So like steam injection. So sorry. It, the most popular of the UHT systems that are existing currently is the direct heating methods. Okay, so which are steam injection as well as steam infusion. So let us try to understand what exactly steam injection as well as steam infusion means. So whenever we are talking about steam injection, so as the name itself suggests, it indicates a steam is injected into the milk process referred to as steam injection technique. To give you an example, I have included here a picture. So here and we can actually see steam is being injected into a stream of milk. So that is the reason why it is regarded as injection process. So after this, there will be a heat transfer that is occurring between the steam as well as the milk and thereby the temperature of the milk will significantly increase. 
So as per the definition if we go, the temperature of the milk should be at least 130 degrees centigrade and it has to be held approximately for a period of 2 seconds. Okay, so that is an important thing as far as steam injection is concerned. So next thing we have steam infusion. So as the name itself suggests, it includes milk is injected into the steam process referred as steam infusion process. So herein I have given you a picture as well. So here we have a steam stream of what to say steam. So the milk is being injected. Okay, so that means if we are infusing the milk, it is regarded as steam infusion. So milk is being infused into the stream of steam. Okay, so that is regarded as milk infusion. So these are the two distinct variety of UHT process which are currently being employed in case of dairy industry. Okay, so besides that, the other important type of preservation technique is the refrigeration time. Uh, refrigeration technique. So the, in case of refrigeration technique, it is the re as the name itself suggests, so we will be significantly keeping the milk or milk product at a lower temperature that is at a refrigeration temperature which is significantly 7.2 degree centigrade. So as per the definition of pasteurization if we go after significantly heating the milk for 72 degree centigrade for 15 seconds or 63 degree centigrade for 30 minutes. So after this it has to be immediately cooled. So why? I will give you the reason in here. So in case of higher temperature what happens? We will be particularly be practically free from every other kind of pathogens. Okay, so mesophilic microorganism as well as thermoduric microorganism might actually be dead at this particular temperature. Okay, and also if thermophilic So thermophilic microorganism are the type of microorganism which can resist pasteurization temperature and also can multiply at the same temperature okay so such kind of thermophilic microorganism can actually survive so the survival of the thermophilic microorganism will in turn render the food product to undergo spoilage okay so immediately after the pasteurization if we are subjecting it for cooling so if we are cooling it to less than 7.2 degree centigrade means the thermophilic microorganism will not be able to grow because the optimum temperature for the thermophilic to grow lies anywhere between 40 to 50 degrees centigrade depending on what kind of or what type of microorganism it actually is. Okay, so as per the definition of the pasteurization, after the significant time temperature combination heat treatment, it has to be significantly cooled to 7.2 degree centigrade or anywhere below that. Okay, so at the farm level, we have something as bulk milk cooler. Okay, so as we have already studied, mesophilic microorganism predominance in case of milk. So, in case of farm level, we are storing it at a room temperature. So, we can actually use something called as bulk milk cooler, which is also called as BMC or bulk milk coolers or bulk milk chillers. Okay, so they will significantly reduce the temperature of the milk to 3 to 4.5 degree centigrade. So, at that particular temperature, only cyclotropes and cyclophile can actually survive. Okay, so the fermented milk products and also the unripened cheese variety after and also the ripened cheese variety after the ripening process are subjected and kept at a lower temperature. So in case of fermented milk, if we are keeping fermented milk, take an example of dahi or curd which you prepare at home. Okay, so after the incubation period of say 12 hours or 6 hours, if you are keeping it at a room temperature for a longer duration of time, it will experience severing. Okay, that means there will be a lot of fermentation that is happening and lactic acid will be liberated and in turn it will render the product to sour taste. Okay, so similarly in case of unripened cheese also, if we are not intending for ripening process, then we will have to significantly keep it at refrigeration temperature. Okay, so that is often important thing that needs to be taken into consideration. So this is the importance of the refrigeration technique.
okay so in case of refrigeration technique soon after the pasteurization it has to be significantly cool to 7.2 degree centigrade so that we can significantly avoid the number of thermophilic microorganism multiplying in the platform and also at the farm level so since mesophilic microorganism predominates to tackle such kind of mesophilic microorganism we can have bmc installed that is bulk milk coolers or bulk milk chillers which significantly decreases the temperature of the milk to 3 to 4.5 degree centigrade so besides that to tackle effectively with the fermentation process and also unripened cheese variety can be significantly kept at a refrigeration temperature as well okay so that is about the refrigeration so coming to the freezing so freezing is nothing but an important technique which is a low temperature technique employed in case of dairy industry so as we have already studied we have frozen deserts so the frozen deserts such as like the ice cream so ice cream is a frozen desert so whenever we are storing the ice cream at a very very low temperature which is less than 0 degree centigrade it means that it is practically rendering the food product to be free from any kind of a microorganism because at this particular temperature of less than 0 degree centigrade most of the microorganism besides psychrophiles cannot actually survive so it means that it is practically making it impossible for the microorganism to grow at this particular temperature so similarly we can always keep butter which is a fat rich dairy product at a significantly low temperature of minus 17 to minus 18 degree centigrade so that is the ideal temperature of storage for fat rich dairy product that is butter which will in turn prevent it from undergoing any kind of a microbial uh, spoilage okay so besides that we also have another important technique that is added preservative so the preservatives which are chiefly added to increase in the shelf life of the food product are also possible which will which is actually happening so the addition of the preservative to the dairy product is permitted only to a limited extent so you cannot add more number of preservatives so there are only permitted preservatives by fssci so what is fssci it is food safety and standard authority of india so fssci has established a permissible limit for preservatives so they have established a permissible limit of preservative and what kind of preservative should be added for what variety of food product so only such kind of preservative must be added only at a desirable quantity okay so it should not be excess all right so the use of sorbic acid as well as the propionic acid salts can be permitted in variety of products such as like the cottage cheese yogurt and some other cheese varieties as well as the processed cheese so what is practically doing it means that it is practically making sure that there is no microorganism which is growing it means that it is facilitating the inactivation of broad range of microorganism including bacteria yeast as well as mold okay so besides that the natural preservatives such as like the sugar as well as the sodium chloride so sodium chloride is mostly added for the flavor imparting uh, and also the sugar sugar is basically added for flavor and salt is also basically added for flavor so besides that they also have or impart the secondary activity that is the preservation so it means that what exactly it is doing it is leading to plasmolysis so if we have a microorganism which is full of water and we have a salt solution or a sugar solution so the water from inside of the bacterial cell will move out of the cell which is nothing but plasmolysis which is in turn rendering the food bacteria to undergo death because the plasmolysis what it does if we have a hypotonic solution of sugar or salt then it will draw all the moisture out of the bacterial cell 
in turn and rendering the microorganism to undergo decline or death phase okay so that is the importance of natural preservatives so the natural preservative sodium chloride as well as salt is actually added to numerous variety of food product in case of sodium chloride we are adding it to cheese and also in case of sugar we will be adding it for numerous variety of traditional food product and also we will be adding it to the pre preparation of sweetened condensed milk as well so these are the six important preservation techniques which are actually employed in the dairy industry to in turn extend the shelf life of the milk product okay so let us now have an understanding on what are all the important spoilages of milk as well as milk product so whenever we are talking about spoilage of milk as well as cream so we need to have broad categorization that is natural savouring curdling by lactic acid production and we will be studying about the gas production in case of a uh, um, dairy product ropiness or sliminess proteolysis lipolysis bitter or bitty flavor of flavors which are preliminarily observed because of micro microorganism as well as discoloration so let us now have an understanding of individual different types of spoilage one by one okay so first thing we have the natural sour or curdling so how exactly the acid is being produced so the mechanism of action for the same includes if the raw milk is held for a some time at ambient temperature so ambient temperature here it is referring to room temperature which is necessarily 37 degrees centigrade so the immediately the effect is noticed by souring followed by curdling so what ideally happens is if you are keeping the raw milk without having it pasteurized or processed at a room temperature that is ambient condition so then the microorganism which are naturally present will start utilizing the lactose they will start utilizing the lactose and leads the production of lactic acid so lactic acid production will significantly decrease the acidity of the milk and it will result in the curdling okay so that is the reason why it is effectively advised to keep unprocessed milk or the raw milk at a refrigeration condition so that the mesophilic microorganism which might be present will not result in the production of lactic acid which decreases the ph of the milk and in turn results in the curdling of the milk okay so the fresh milk has an acidity of ranging anywhere between 0.1 to 0.19 percentage lactic acid while in case of souring it uh, it it contributes to somewhere around 0.2 to 0.25 while the curdling if we observe the breakage in the curd then it means that it is the acidity has significantly reached to a height of 0.65 percentage lactic acid so the microorganism that is like responsible for the same includes the lactic acid bacteria the streptococci lactobacilli leuconostoc as well as coliforms so these are mostly the heterofermentative so some are homofermentative while coliform is a heterofermentative microorganism so when i say heterofermentative it means that such kind of microorganism can ferment lactose producing lactic acid plus other type of compounds such as like carbon dioxide or acetic acid or butyric acid when i say homofermentative it is the category of microorganism which can ferment lactose only to produce lactic acid so they will not produce anything other than lactic acid so if we have anything in addition to lactic acid be it carbon dioxide acetic acid or butyric acid or any acid for that matter then it is called as heterofermentative so how exactly we can prevent this from happening so first thing is we need to avoid the contamination because if the contamination is happening such kind of microorganism can be seen and the control in the temperature so as i have already told you in the ambient temperature the mesophiles predominates okay so if such kind of unprocessed milk is kept at a lower temperature say at refrigeration temperature we can significantly control the amount of microorganism so next thing pasteurization because during pasteurization what happens ideally all the mesophilic 
cyclophile as well as uh, cyclotropes will be taken care and immediately chilling of the milk after processing. So, such kind of preservative technique or preventive measure should be employed so that we can significantly avoid the problem with the natural souring observed exclusively in case of raw milk. So, second in we have another important problem or the spoilage that is the gas production. So, as the name itself suggests, it means that it is producing a numerous variety of gas. So, how exactly this mechanism operates? So, the production of gas can be seen as a foam on the top if the milk is liquid and super saturated with the gas bubbles caught in the curd. So, ideally what happens if you see a milk which has frothing or gas bubbles all over it. So, imagine you have a container of milk and you happen to observe the gas bubble all over it. It means that it is an indication that there is a gas production that is happening. So, this gas production is exclusively because of microorganisms such as like heterofermentative as I have already explained. So, heterofermentative microorganisms are the type of microorganism which produces lactic acid plus any other kind of compound. Okay, so here in, in this case, I am concentrating more on carbon dioxide because it is the gas production. Okay, so this particular gas production which is allowing the formation of the gas bubble and in turn breaking the curd is regarded as stormy fermentation of milk. So, it can be also called as stormy fermentation of milk. Okay, so here whenever we are talking about gas production, it is besides the increase in the lactic acid contained which decreases the pH, there will be hydrogen as well as carbon dioxide also produced by the microorganism. So, the microorganism responsible for the same includes heterofermentative lactose or lactic lactics which are non-coliform variety plus lactococcus, LYFS, lactose fermenting yeast, lactose fermenting yeast and we have coliform Clostridium as well as Bacillus. So, such kind of microorganism are the causative microorganism for gas production or stormy fermentation of milk. So, how exactly one can prevent this? So, it can be prevented by avoiding contamination with the microorganism by, um, by employing asepsis method and also holding the milk and cream at an amber at a you know ambient temperature should be avoided. It should not be held at an ambient temperature. For that matter, any other food product, especially the milk product which is not dried, exclu excluding the dried milk product, it should be necessarily kept at a refrigeration temperature and adequate heat treatment should be employed so that the number of microorganism load can be significantly decreased. So, this was about the gas production. To give you an overview, so in case of gas production what happens we will have or we will experience or we will see the gas bubble all over the top of the container which is having the milk and also there is breakage of the curd particle which is in turn rendering the product for undergoing stormy fermentation of milk. So, what kind of gases can be produced? It can be hydrogen as well as carbon dioxide and the causative microorganism and the corresponding preservation technique that could be employed. So, next then we have another important type of spoilage that is ropiness or sliminess. So, whenever we are talking about ropiness or sliminess, it means that they are effectively destabilizing the fluid nature of the milk. It means that it is making it viscous. The ropiness or sliminess is nothing but the viscous nature of the milk. So, it is exclusively because of the bacterial action. Okay, so, the bacterial action which is creating a slimy nature or imparting a slimy nature in case of milk. So, in case of ropiness, what ideally happens is like it will be very viscous and you will see a thread like structure whenever you are scooping out a portion of milk from a container, okay, which does not ideally happen. So, it will stretch like a thread. So, that is nothing but an indication of the product has underwent ropiness by the microorganisms which is such as like alkali genes viscolactis okay so this might be an important question guys so alkali genes viscolactis is one of the important microorganism 
which causes sliminess or ropiness in case of milk product. Besides that, we also have Micrococci, Enterobacter aerochains, Klebsiella and E. coli and Enterobacter different variety. Okay, so these are the causative microorganisms which is causing ropiness or sliminess in case of milk product. So how exactly we can tackle this particular problem? So clean milk production, what is CMP? Okay, so the clean milk production must be employed. So the clean milk production includes numerous principles starting from how exactly the animal has to be grooved, how exactly the milker has to handle. So the hygienic practices, the sanitation practices, the environment in which the animal is being milked. So everything will come under clean milk production. Okay, so besides that we will also have to avoid the post pasteurization contamination. So these are the important preservation techniques which could possibly avoid the occurrence of the ropiness or sliminess in case of milk product. Okay, so the next important variety that we would be discussing is proteolysis. So proteolysis as we previously studied it is the breakdown of protein. So the protein will be broken down into amino acids. So this particular amino acids will be bitter. Bitter in taste. So if the amino acids are bitter in taste, it is exclusively because of proteolysis. Okay, so the amino acids will result in the bitter peptide formation which in turn imparts bitter flavor to the final product. So this is exclusively because of an enzyme called as protease. So this particular protease enzyme is produced by variety of microorganism which might be psychrotropic by nature that means that these are the kind of microorganism which can grow at 7 degree or less than that particular temperature. So they include pseudomonas, fluorescence, pseudomonas, fragi and alt uh, alteromonas putrefaci <coughs> putrefaciation. So these are the important psychrotropes which produces such kind of an enzyme that is protease which is rendering the product to undergo proteolysis thereby producing the bitter peptides okay so next thing we also have thermodurics which can resist the pasteurization temperature so the microorganism here includes so the bacillus species okay so the micrococcus species okay so how exactly one this can be prevented by avoiding the contamination okay that is by asepsis and controlling the storage temperature so storage temperature is very very significant as we are already aware so enzyme are very very sensitive to change in ph or temperature okay so storing them at a lower temperature or at a higher temperature which will in turn facilitate or inactivates the enzyme activity is significantly important and also pasteurization at a normal higher temperature so pasteurization must be done which effectively decreases the load of microorganism which have the ability to produce protease as an enzyme which causes or brings about proteolysis so next then we have lipolysis so as we have already studied lipolysis as well it is nothing but breakdown of lipid breakdown of lipid into free fatty acids which is contributing to the off flavor and off odor off flavor and off odor okay so this is exclusively again because of a specific kind of an enzyme called as lipase so this particular lipase enzyme is again produced by numerous variety of microorganisms such as like pseudomonas proteus alkali chains and many other varieties so they have a tendency to produce lipase as an enzyme which will break down lipid into free fatty acids in turn imparting off flavor and off odor to the final product okay so how exactly this can be prevented by ensuring clean milk practices okay and also cooling of the milk as per the recommendation and we will have to make sure that the milk is properly pasteurized so in turn we can avoid the occurrence of lipolysis in case of 
milk as well as milk product so next then we have other important changes with respect to the flavor characteristics so what are the different kinds of changes that could be expected so herein i have listed nine important types of flavor change which are predominantly observed in case of milk as well as milk product and the responsible microorganism for the same okay so first then we have fruity flavor fruity flavor might actually sound much fancy and it must seem that it is extremely you know good in taste or anything of that sort but what it actually is so as we are aware flavor is a combination of taste plus odor taste plus odor okay so this is exclusively because the microorganism produces ethyl esters so this particular ethyl esters are produced by a variety of psychrotropes and lactic acid bacteria so these particular ethyl extras includes ethyl butyrate and ethyl hexonate so such kind of ethyl esters impart fruity flavor to the final product which is highly undesirable as far as milk product is considered next in we have multi flavor okay so this is exclusively caused by a microorganism such as such as lactococcus lactis subspecies lactis variants multi chains okay so that is multi flavor next is bitty flavor okay which is exclusively because of the proteolytic so bitty flavor is also called as bitter flavor so whenever we say proteolytic it means that it is resulting in the formation of bitter peptides which imparts bitter flavor so as far as spoilage is concerned okay so the microorganism especially responsible for this includes bacillus species as well as pseudomonas species so next then we have fishy flavor so whenever we are talking about fishy flavor it can be by pseudomonas species exclusively okay and similarly we also have potato flavor so this particular potato flavor is exclusively because of pseudomonas species as well okay so similarly we also have phenolic flavor which is caused by bacillus circulans and also we have musty flavor which is caused by actinomycetes as well as certain yeast so actinomycetes is a soil microflora so it is mostly present in case of soil okay so burnt or caramel flavor caused by multi strains of lactococcus lactis subspecies lactis okay and finally we also have unclean flavor so which is exclusively because of yeastericia coli so another important thing that i have already told you is the presence of e coli indicates fecal contamination because it is a uh, it is a type of microorganism which is present in the intestinal tract of an warm blooded animal okay so the presence of e coli gives an indication of fecal contamination thereby imparting unclean flavor to the milk as well as milk product so this is about the flavor characteristic change that is observed as a result of spoilage in case of milk as well as milk product so finally we have another important change that is the discoloration so how exactly or what different kinds of discoloration can be seen in case of milk as well as milk product okay so here and i have listed couple of discoloration and the corresponding microorganism name okay so the yellow color of discoloration if it is observed in case of variety of milk product it is exclusively because of pseudomonas syncanta okay so pseudomonas syncanta is the responsible microorganism for yellow color so similarly in case of blue we have pseudomonas syncyane and the black color is exclusively because of pseudomonas nigrifaciens and the red color is exclusively because of ceratia marsensis as well as rhodotorula and the green color is exclusively because of pseudomonas fluorescens okay so of which red color is of important okay so because it is mostly asked in most of your question papers so try to remember what kind of microorganism is actually imparting red color discoloration to the final product exclusively in case of milk as well as milk product so it is ceratia marsensis so, so besides that green color is exclusively because of pseudomonas fluorescens so these are the undesirable discoloration which are exclusively observed in case of milk as well as milk product so this was about all the spoilage of dairy product 
wherein we have exclusively studied about the different sources of contamination of dairy or milk and also how exactly one can combat effectively by employing variety of preservation technique and what are all the important spoilages that are predominating in case of uh, milk as well as dairy product and how exactly one can actually tackle that. So I hope this entire lecture of spoilage of milk as well as milk product or dairy product is effectively understood by each and every one of you. Thank you very much guys.